Ravnica, a plain-wide city of grandeur where opportunity blossoms from spires innumerable. Its skyline extends beyond the horizon. Its streets fill with the bustling hum of metropolitan affairs. Its darkened alleys and grim undercity cover illicit rendezvous. It enraptures with sheer magnitude, a world of wonder open to possibility. Ravnica's cobbled urban jungle is, however, riven by partisan factionalism. Ten guilds, each with distinct agendas and ideologies, act as Ravnica's foundational power, bound to another through the pervasive, absolute magic of the guild pact. They feud endlessly with another, clashing for primacy over Ravnica's crowded districts. Millennia have shaped them into unique organizations peopled with myriad races, creatures, and cultures, all united in purpose by civic duty. Theirs is a history convoluted by intrigue, subterfuge, war, and propaganda as each struggles to wrest control of this vibrant city. Hey lore lovers, my name's Eric with the Lord Brains YouTube channel and welcome to the final part of our three-part series explaining the plane of Ravnica. If you haven't already, be sure to check out parts one and two detailing the plane itself and the five allied colored guilds. Links in the description. In this video, we'll round out our discussion with the remaining five enemy colored guilds. The Golgari Swarm, the Orzhov Syndicate, the Boros Legion, Izzet League, and Smic Combine. But before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. Their support is greatly appreciated and helps the channel continue to improve. Alright, let's dive in. Spiraling stairwells, narrowing alleyways, and sluicing streams lead to the darkened realm of Ravnica's Undercity, where danger lurks, death is pervasive, and the sun's warmth extinguished. This mirrored realm of the world above is a grim labyrinth where ruins hold ossified remains and where the city's rot is meticulously gathered and cultivated to foster new growth within putrid farms. Creatures unknown skitter in shadows. Moans of raised dead pierce the echoing quiet. A great multitude of the grizzly dominates as the realm of the Golgari swarm. The Golgari is Ravnica's green and black aligned guild whose civic charge is the management of waste and production of readily available foodstuffs to fill billions of stomachs. They're an inexorable mass of writhing flesh, replete with such dark abominations as plant zombies, undead liches, rot shamans, and petrifying gorgons who propagate life's continual spinning. Like the great serpent Time, whose mouth consumes its own tail, the Golgari revere both life and death as two ends of nature's continual cycle. Death nourishes new growth, and the expiration of old life increases death's stores. The Golgari believe that life is strengthened from death, and that death is no end but rather a means of reclamation, thus starting the cycle anew as seen in the illustration of Golgari germination, the flavor text of which states, The Golgari don't bury their dead, they plant them. Golgari propagation of life from death and accumulation of dead material is manifest in the swarm's green and black color identity. Surging green ley lines bolster the nourishing magic of Golgari shamans and rot farmers. It's the color of life, of growth and natural abundance that enriches the guild. We see it used to stimulate fungal bloom in the illustration of Glowspore Shaman. Corrosive black mana fuels death's inevitable reach. It allows necromancers, liches, and swarm reclaimers to raise the dead, to transform stinking nutrient-rich detritus into brilliant, explosive life, their grim work highlighted in the card Grizzly Salvage. The two colors are intertwined beautifully in the guild's mechanics. Dredge is viewed as the tilling of crops fertilized by death to reclaim what has previously expired. Matter beyond reanimation or reclamation is scavenged to invigorate extant life, seen in distribution of 1-1 counters. The undergrowth mechanic highlights the swarm's exploitation of Ravnican graves and rubbish heaps. When balanced, Green and black create a natural cycle where death is necessary for life to flourish, and where dwindling life force is recycled, reinvigorated in death's gentle palm. When taken to extremes, however, these colors violently leech life from others, expand their innumerable masses in a flood of death that inundates all. There's reason the Golgari claim the moniker of Swarm. This guild is more numerous than any other due in large part to its unbridled germination and efficient recycling that ensures even deceased members are reborn in life's endless cycle. This sentiment is illustrated in the card Bloodbond March, the text of which reads, The Golgari support a vast army because death never ends its soldier's service. They roam the Undercity millions strong and establish outposts of trade and diplomacy within the upper city's sunbathed streets. With such a seething mass, Structure in the Golgari requires further division into stratified castes and clans, each with ambition and unique purpose. 
an ancient race of long-dead elves from Ravnica's past, known as the erstwhile, once slumbered in elaborately ornate mausoleums. Coffins fitted with ostentation that mirrored their belief in superiority. The erstwhile have been revived, called from their eternal slumber as zombies, bound to the will of the Golgari, which we hear in the flavor text of Awaken the Erstwhile. In preparation for the conflict all foresaw, the Golgari called upon an army that had slept for millennia beneath the city. They possess a nimbleness and intelligence that both sets them apart from traditional undead and exemplifies the power they once commanded, displayed in cards like Attendant of Raska, an erstwhile trooper. The aggressive, insectoid species of crawl skitter along arched alleyways and lurk in the darkness, alert to prey movements. As the flavor text of Crawl Raider and Warrior imply, the Crawl are an ancient race that for most of its history operated on the periphery of the Golgari Swarm. Only recently have they been adopted and valued by the guild for their ferocity, cunning, and knowledge of the Undercity. They have a semi-religious culture of death worship that follows the preachings of their leader, Mazarek, the Death Priest. A secretive race of extant elves known as the Devkarin steer Swarm ambition. They seek conflict, they push for Swarm growth and expansion through devious means. Their soldiers are practiced in many martial arts, and their mages wield death magic with finesse, as seen in the art and flavor text of Rites of Reaping. The High Priestess, Azoni Thousand-Eyed, speaks on behalf of the Devkarin to other Swarm factions. For much of their history, the Golgari's ruling elite was a shambling conglomeration of live and undead non-humanoid creatures known as the Teretogens. Centaurs, creeping plant life, reanimated mutants, harpies, and such bloated detritus, so symbolic of the swarm, acted as majority. Their grotesque visage on display in cards like Mulder Hulk and Drooling Grudian. Some teratogens, such as the dreaded Gorgon with its petrifying gaze, still command respect both within and without the guild. The seething mass of Golgari's innumerable street swarm form the labor class that scavenge for corpses in haunted yards till and nurture stinging heaps of rot farm filth, perform shamanic rituals to invigorate bottom-feeding fungi, and spread the welcoming word for all Ravnikans to join the swarm. The members of this faction strike upward from the Undercity to bring Golgari ideas and force into daylight. We see this in the illustration of Golgari Brownscale, and hear it in the flavor text of Drudge Beetle. The street swarm is the labor class that drives the Golgari's endless cycle of life and death. The guild claim large swaths of territory both on Ravnica's bustling surface streets and in the abysmal undercity maze. On the surface, Zanikev stands as the largest waste reclamation zone where life rises from death in the Great Rot Farm. Unfortunately, its only mention comes in Zanikev Locust, but we can imagine its appearance similar to Golgari Rot Farm. An abyssal sinkhole within 10th District, known as Dead Bridge, functions as an unofficial dumping site for Ravnica's dead. Thousands of corpses are unceremoniously cast into the chasm. From its depths, Golgari reclaimers and necromancers recycle or reanimate undead flesh, illustrated in the Dead Bridge Shaman. Svokthos, the restless tomb once stood as the great heart of the swarm within labyrinthine undercity reaches, named after the guild's founding parents Svokthir. This overgrown, semi-living cathedral structure operated as guild hall, where all great decisions were made. With Svokthir's death and ascendancy of the elf lich Jarad as guild leader, the hub of activity shifted from Svogthos to the twisting maze of root-choked sewers and streets known as Karozda. Its avenues are unwaveringly patrolled by all manner of living and undead, such as the Karozda Gorgon and Underrealm lich. Jarad himself was usurped by the Gorgon Planeswalker Vraska during the events of War of the Spark, whose rage and ambition resulted in significant swarm aggressive expansion but Karozda remains hive to the chittering swarm. The Golgari spread like a slow mold to consume all around, seeking to enjoin swarm with Ravnica. This has led to interactions with all other guilds, some beneficial and some detrimental. The swarm respects both Simic and Selesnian exploits to expand nature's claim to vast tracts of uninhabited city and have even worked alongside Simic biomages to produce collaborative artificial creatures. They don't, however, share the Golgari's worship of death as a fundamental and necessary cycle of life. The swarm despises the blinding rays of light and flame cast by zealous Boros mages and often conflicts with the Legion as they spread to an increasing number of neighborhoods above their undercity realm. They abhor the artifice and wizardry of the Izzet League, crazed scientists who have lost touch with the stunning beauty and simplicity found in nature. The swarm is a peculiar mix of growth and decay most strikingly apparent in the flavor text of their signet. 
depending on your point of view. The seal represents a proud guardian of the natural cycle, or one who has sold her soul to darkness for eternal life. An elaborate stone edifice beckons supplicants through the impressive cathedral, whose vaulted arches and dazzling glasswork reverberate with the choir's hum of evening vespers. It's a sight that commands respect, engenders humility, and demands subservience to the Church of Orzova, the Church of Deals, led by the Orzov Syndicate. The Orzov are Ravnica's white and black aligned guild, charged with the civic duty of trade, commerce, and capital, the grim deals of which are hidden beneath a false show of religious beneficence. The Orzov are a strictly organized criminal syndicate, obsessed with the clinking of a full purse and the hushed whispers of guilt-ridden confession. They prey on the ambitious, the weak and the downtrodden, with empty promises and carefully crafted deals. The Ravnica's clergy, bankers, advocates, and spirits possessed by consuming avarice. Their church and banks are twin operations, the sole purpose of which is to direct wealth to the top of their inflexible hierarchy. A sentiment echoed in the flavor text of Castigate. We have no need for military might. We wield two of the sharpest swords ever forged. Faith in our left hand, wealth in our right. To Orzov, capital is the only religion, death and taxes, life's only certainties, both of which are held in oppressive regulation. Coin's call extends beyond the grave. So too do the debts brokered by the syndicate. Church promises are alluring, but once their claws sink in, there's no escape. Surging ley lines of white men have fuel the church orthodoxy, its strict adherence to ancient tradition and the rigid structure within their organization. Legal drafters known as advocates, broker binding contracts, and Orzov syndics travel Ravnica's busy streets, collecting alms from the guilt-ridden. White offers community in religion no matter how hollow its framework, but it's cast into corrupt shadow by the presence of black manna. As the color of greed and ambition, black fuels the Orzov singular pursuit of wealth. It arms syndicate assassins with skills necessary to collect payment and enforce deals. It's also the color of death. Prelates and pontiffs within the church raise spirits of indebted souls still bound to Orzov if they themselves don't already number among the undead, haunting cathedral walks. The allure of wealth too promising to grant eternal rest. We hear this in the flavor text of Revenant Patriarch. The Golgari raise the bodies of their dead to serve. We raise the spirits of our dead to lead. The essence of the guild is manifest in its mechanics. Both Haunt and Afterlife demonstrate the Orzov's command over death, reviving spirits to squeeze more use before discarding them entirely. The Extort mechanic symbolizes the church's oppressive greed, their collection of tithes. When balanced, these colors of black and white offer a faith-based community that executes financial functions and recruits with promises of belonging, longevity, and affluence. When taken to extremes, the religion turns dogmatically sour and rigid. The banks transform into corrupt rackets, and the accumulation of wealth becomes a chain around which even spirits of the dead are shackled. Deep beneath Orzova's marbled floors, a mausoleum built in days long gone and protected from Hieromancy's binding magic holds the seat of the syndicate's power. We see the austere opulence displayed in illustrations of Godless Shrine and Orzov Basilica. From here, a ragged collection of ancient spirits, twisted by avarice, fueled by covetedness, known as the Abzadat Ghost Council, direct the guild and make their will known. The council's most influential member is Grandfather Karlov of the Noble Bloodline, who acts as mediator and tiebreaker within the Abzadat. As spirits that have lingered for centuries, the council has forgotten entirely of their worldly selves and devolved ever more into the dark abyss of ambition that drives them to accumulate souls and coin. Tesa, a living member of the Karlov family, once acted as voice for the Abzadat, envoy in their dealings with other guilds, but an attempted coup left her imprisoned in the tallest, most isolated spire. More recently, the ghost assassin Kaya Kassir was hired by Nicol Bolas to murder the Abzadat and plunge the guild into leaderless chaos. This action on display in the card Kaya's Wrath, which reads, Tesa convened the meeting of the Abzadat. Kaya ended it. The Abzadat were forever silenced and both Tesa and Kaya worked to maintain stability. Though the ghost councils no more, the church and syndicate pyramid of influence they sat atop remains to ensure smooth funneling of coin and flow of blood into Orzova's coffers. The foundation of the pyramid are the millions of indebted borrowers, humbled by guilty conscience, who legally sign away fortune and free will to a crushing church that instills subservience. The weight of guilt can be felt in cards like Blind Obedience, 
debtor's pulpit and purge the profane, the text of which states, The Orzov hear the plans of the other guilds through the guilty thoughts of the disloyal. Though not official members of the guild, without the borrower's money to finance their ambition, the Orzov power structure would flounder. Syndics collect interest at appalling rates, and advocates draft beguiling contracts to bind borrower's souls if ever they default on loans. These low-ranking officials represent the second strata in the Church of Deals. Operating as couriers, accountants, attorneys, and advisors, the syndics are indoctrinated members of the Orzov. Their deep convictions are of a just cause, but ambition and avarice ensure they keep an eye open to all opportunities for personal advancement. The Orzov require physicality to maintain contracts and the inflexible status quo. To this end, they employ irreverent assassins and knights pledged to their hollow religion, whose presence protects alms collectors, pack beasts, and processions through cramped Ravnican streets. The ministrant is the loftiest role one can achieve who was born outside the guild's illustrious, incestuous bloodlines. The ministrants operate as priests, deacons, high council, and managers of the syndic and knightly ranks beneath them. They preach lies of salvation through the church while demanding idolist servitude of those under their heel. Above the ministrants are the overseeing pontiffs that enact the Obsidot's will and occasionally speak directly with the ghost council. To reach such a position requires lifetimes of sacrifice to the guild, and as such, many pontiffs are undead skeletons or phantasmal spirits. The ancient families whose ancestors first founded the church comprise the imperious and infinitely wealthy oligarchs. These self-righteous clans often rest on their inheritance and do little of value. Some, however, bestow their patronage upon the arts and commission grand projects worthy of their ostentation. Few living oligarchs remain, addled by birth defects and curses consequent of familial inbreeding. Of the races and creatures within the church, humans are the most prolific. Their easily exploitable desire draws them in. Their ambition fuels them to reach all echelons of the pyramid. They can be found in bank antechambers, in church pews, and in law offices, employed in every capacity, from syndic to knight to devious assassin. Decadence attracts Ravnica's vampires to the church. They embrace the ideals of wealth, of longevity and opulence found in the guild as seen in the domineering blood baron of Viscopa. Many were once human, denied great station in life or the opportunity to be spiritually reborn, so resorted to find undead immortality along a different path willfully undergoing the transformation into an unslakable vampire. Hedonism is unleashed in their functions as tithe collectors and pontiffs, preferring payment in blood, as is the case with tithe drinker and pitiless pontiff, the flavor text of which reads, Pay in gold, pay in blood, pay with the servitude of your spirit kin, but pay you must. They inspire fear to cow the masses while drinking from crimson-stained goblets. Orzov spirits are plentiful in the halls of both church and bank. For some, it's a gift of life everlasting as they roam Ravnica, indulging in the excesses afforded them. They are the ruling elite, sinisterly illustrated in debt to the deathless. For a great many others, it's servitude that extends beyond the grave. Contractual magic binds borrower spirits to fulfill their loans in undeath. Their agonized wails and paltry existence are a constant reminder to those who owe the Orzov. We feel their anguish in cards like Souls of the Faultless and Debtor's Knell, whose flavor text states, One moment, conscious only of a sense of repose. The next moment, hearing the trudge of his own footsteps, he sighed and squinted into the glare ahead. The Orzov make a show of power and opulence by outward displays of servile retinues, but far greater than servants bound are servants made. Thralls are born through profane magic as grim amalgamations of discarded flesh and spirit to enact their master's desires. They are masked, emaciated, grotesque creatures who unerringly fulfill the Orzov's will as they have been stripped of their own. Thralls vary in appearance based on task from the sniveling, repulsive servant like the dutiful thrall to large beasts of burden like the treasury thrall. Angels act as a strange paradox unique to the syndicate. Magical manifestations of mana and high ideals, angels are repulsed by the church's greed. Yet not even these divine beings are beyond corruption. Those who question their purpose, who desire the respect and power thus deserved, embrace black mana and find home in Orzova. Orzov angels are fickle, self-serving, and possessed of a twisted justice that renders them merciless pontiffs and executioners bound only by their own shifting morality. This is heard in Angel of Despair. 
I feel in them a sense of duty and commitment, yet I can feel nothing else. It's as if their duty is to an empty void. As Ravnica's chief financial backers, the Orzhov enmesh themselves within the dealings of all other guilds and treat them as exploitable resources. They share a cause for structure and power with House Demir and respect their death magic wielded by Golgari mages. The Azorius Senate, however, represent the Syndicate's greatest threat as it attempts to impose its stringent law upon illicit guild activity. The Gruul clans in their anarchy are equally dangerous to the church. Berserkers plunder banks and shatter stained glass. Despite guild intrigue, the Church of Deals stands as a domineering beacon of luxury, decadence, and greed, veiled by a thin facade of sanctity as is heard in the flavor text of their signet. The form of the sigil is just as important as the sigil itself. If it's carried on a medallion, its bearer is a master. If it's tattooed on the body, its bearer is a slave. Corruption plagues Ravnica. Lawlessness and injustice gnaw at the city's heart, prey upon the meek. Those who witness such atrocity and are stirred to action take up steel and raise the standard. They join the resplendent Boros Legion, Ravnica's Red and White Align Guild, bringing righteous justice upon evil's agents. Thunderous legions of metal-clad soldiers marching Ravnica's wide avenues in a sea of disciplined zeal marks Boros passage. They were founded as Ravnica's military, combining the high ideals of a peaceful safe society with the violent aggression necessary to achieve such grand vision. They are the conspicuous policing body. Their regiments make their influence felt throughout city blocks. Brave patrols of disciplined soldiers defend citizens from depredation, exploitation, and infiltration by other guilds. The Legion is a well-oiled machine, a weapon of high justice, a symbol of hope. White mana ley lines contribute to the Boros vision of unity through peace. It empowers notions of equity and safety, while also laying the foundational brick atop which a structured society must be erected. We see this in cards like Light of the Legion and Bathe in Light, the flavor text of which reads, Truth shines even in darkness. Those who march on the side of truth walk always in righteous light. But the Boros aren't merely idealistic philosophers. They're driven to action through Red Mana's explosive presence. Zeal and an ardent conviction that their cause is just arm legions of soldiers to meet Ravnica's enemies on the field of battle. Their fervor burns inextinguishable in the heart of every guild member, seen in cards like Legion Loyalist and Cleansing Beam. Boros skill is manifest in the guild's mechanics. Radiance showcases both the Legion's faith and their shared strength, empowering all members on the field. Battalion highlights the Legion's overwhelming force, whose soldiers are bolstered by supporting guildmates. Mentor, meanwhile, demonstrates the discipline so characteristic of Boros, their rigid training and effective martial command. When combined, these colors of white and red create an iron grip covered in a velvet glove. They promote peace, community, and justice, while providing the aggressive teeth required to maintain such idyllic existence. When taken to extremes, these colors are intolerant to nonconformists, overzealous in spreading fanatical philosophy, and blind to gratuitous bloodletting in justice's name, heard in the flavor text of Incite Hysteria. The Boros say they want to bring order to Ravnica. Funny then, how well they use chaos. Boros' dedication to martial discipline is evident in the guild's foundational structure. Long ago, the Legion was divided into theaters of war to best address conflict, but has since reorganized into a system of semi-autonomous garrisons to quicken threat response and mitigate enemy infiltration, seen in the illustration of Boros' garrison. Each garrison is equipped with an impressive arsenal and manned by fierce soldiers, but the most influential and to whom all defer is Sunho, Fortress of the Legion. This impressive citadel fortress is the Boros Guild Hall and a tangible testament to the impregnable resolve of the Legion. Its battlements bristle with shining guardians, its spires echo with the beat of angel wings, its courtyard rumbles with the footfalls of multiplex battalions. It's a beacon of justice and a command center for other garrisons. Aurelia, the angelic guild leader, casts an aura of calm conviction over all of Sunhome and presides as war leader to the Boros. She assumed control after the guild parent Razia was slain in the original Ravnica block. Aurelia is far more present than her predecessor, who remained aloof. She's filled with a burning impetus for action and enacts stratagems necessary to realize Boros' ideals. Her dogma, heard in the flavor text of Boros' charm. Practice compassion and mercy, 
but know when they must end. The floating fortress Parhelion II acts as a mobile garrison for the guild, a response team deployed where needed. It's haven to the guild's angelic host, as well as the aerial military branch of Sky Knights, who ride swift winged rocks. Organization within the Legion is largely military hierarchy through meritocracy. Boros recruits and unseasoned soldiers constitute the army's bulk. They train in hope of improving skill and impressing superiors for promotion. Sergeant and lieutenants assume greater responsibility for divisions of troops, while generals and war leaders provide grand strategic oversight for entire garrisons. The Wojek League stands apart from Legion regulars, but is embedded at all levels of the guild. The crack division of elite military personnel act as intelligence, counterintelligence, and internal Boros policing body. They apprehend overzealous Legion members or those who've turned rogue, which we hear in the flavor text of Wojek Ember Mage. Your brother's crimes are your crimes. You stood by and lent support, so you too must face judgment. They weed out spies from other guilds and eliminate plots before they develop. The Wojek are the Legion's eyes, ears, and morality. Several races are drawn to the Legion's equity and community, filled with desire to enact meaningful change for Ravnica's betterment and have offered their swords and their lives to the Boros. The most influential are the dauntless, incorruptible winged host of angels. As manifestations of white and red mana, angels are literal embodiments of zealous Boros ideology. They are the Legion's fiercest warriors and most benevolent guardians, dispensing equally justice and acceptance, as seen in the illustration of War Leader's Helix and Justice Strike. Angels are respected by the guild and hold positions of import within. Battleforce angels soar above the front lines directing garrison tactics and engage in conflict. The Firemains are reverent paragons of holy justice, insatiable in their quest to destroy evil. They strike alone and target the most reprehensible, most vile abominations. At the top of the Legion sit the war leaders, renowned for their strategic acumen and advice to which Aurelia counts herself membership. They shepherd the greater Legion. Humans comprise a large contingent of Boros members and assume positions at all ranks. Many of them wield fire magic as the Legion's firefist mages. Others display cunning sword skill, earning them positions among the infamous swift blades, while others weave through Ravnica's spires as flying skyjack. Humans are bolstered by the staying power of minotaurs and giants, whose physicality allows the Legion to break through defenses. Generations of their ancestors have pledged undying service to the Legion, as we hear in the flavor text of Ordrum Commando. Thick of muscle, stout of heart, and possessing a burning love of justice and the battlefield, the Ordrun Minotaurs are the foundation of the Boros Legion. The swift, unpredictable, and aggressive Viachino and Goblin clans add temerity to battalions. Their zealous fury isn't easily doused, and what they lack in discipline, they compensate with feral animosity, displayed in the illustration of Viachino First Blade and Legion Loyalist. The white hot tempers of magically animated elementals known as Flamekin act as shock troopers. They are the banner of the Legion made manifest, an explosive battlefield statement. The Boros believe all guilds seek to undermine justice and order through dubious machinations and treat them with trepidation, but some have earned greater irritation than others. The spreading heap of the Golgari swarm is seen as a dangerous menace. Many Boros flames are fanned to cull this grotesque underbrush. The slinking Demir are seen as spineless, remorseless, and immoral schemers who prey on the weak and spread disorder. Despite their shared belief in stable society, the Azoria Senate is seen as ineffectual, bloated, and bureaucratic, unable to enact the laws they cherish. The Boros stand as a brilliant sun, guiding the resolute and burning the dreadful in show of prideful strength, as is mentioned in the flavor text of their signet. Have you ever held a Boros signet? There's a weight to it that belies its size, a weight of strength and of pride. Humid steam vents obscure massive pipes whose sluicing water courses beneath Ravnica's substructure to deliver fresh flow to millions. High atop pointed spires daring electromancers harness lightning to fuel great technological projects. Deep within laboratories, half-crazed experimenters flirt dangerously with laws of physics, elements, space, and time, racing to discover the next breakthrough science offers. This flurry of creative and destructive magic, of mad scientists and explosive tests, permeates the chambers of the Experimental Izzet League. 
The Is It, or Ravnica's Blue and Red Align Guild, charged with the civic duty of public works, of technological advancement, and cultural progress. In the centuries since their creation, the League has drifted ever inward, isolating themselves in labs, allowing their public designs to fall into disrepair, and focusing their potential in personalized experimentation to push knowledge's boundaries, leading ultimately to dilapidated projects left in half-finished neglect. Is it or a collection of eccentric mages and erratic geniuses incapable of reigning their furious thoughts? They seek the unknown and value knowledge, epitomized in cards like Epic Experiment and Cyclonic Rift, the flavor text of which states, the Izzet specialize in unnatural disaster. Blue Mana feels Izzet designs, sparks insight, and fosters a community of intellectuals. As the color of ponderance, it grants League members deep wisdom and skill and control of the mystical, seen in Chemister's Insight and Void Wielder. But the often static movements of Blue are charged with impetus by surging red mana. As the color of creativity, inspiration, and passion, red stokes is it minds to a frenzy as they uncover through explosive trial and error sudden breakthroughs that drive progress. Also the color of reckless abandon and fervor, is it are often quick to leap to assumptions and reach the testing phase before their plans are set, much to their detriment. This is given to us in the flavor text of Cerebral Vortex. Is it brains and is it boilers, contents under pressure. Is it experimental research is epitomized in their guild's mechanics. Replicate embodies the scientific process, duplication of a controlled experiment to test if results are valid and supercharge success. Overload showcases the league's not adherence to safety measures, bigger is better and far more destructive. While Jumpstart invigorates a discarded idea with new life as the muse once again is jolted into fevered activity. When balanced, these colors necessarily push what is accepted and known to uncover novelty, discover new methods, and unlock new achievements, inspiring creative efforts to better Ravnica. When taken to extremes, the envelope thus pushed is instead burnt to the ground in brazen, deleterious experiments, the outcome of which is often explosive. It's unable to control creativity, its mystical chaos unbound. The ancient, enigmatic, volatile dragon Niv Mizzet founded the Izzet League as Perrin and has led it ever since. The guild's a testament to the dragon's vanity, as its name and guild symbol are drawn from Niv Mizzet. Also known as the Firemind for his fervent curiosity and piercing intellect, Niv Mizzet exploits his alchemists and mages to promote his own personal machinations. A psychic connection with the Firemind brings tempestuous creativity to experimenters that borders on insanity as seen in the illustration of Invoke the Firemind. Recently, the dragon's twisting schemes have earned him the great powers of living Guild Pact after his death at the hands of Nicol Bolas and subsequent rebirth during the War of the Spark. Niv has transcendent Guild lines and risen to a supreme being. The dizzying spires of Nivix are the central nervous system for the Izzet League, the top of which houses Mizzet's personal airy. The dragon spends much time in contemplative isolation, but hears of outside events through a board of trusted advisors and wizards known as the Ismagnus. They have the privilege of interacting directly with the Firemind and represent the pinnacle of Izzet ingenuity. Beyond Nivix is a maze of electrically charged laboratories within which League experimentation flourishes. Mercurial wizards wield deadly magic to control and unleash potential energy found within the basic elements of fire air, electricity, water, and ice. Unstable combinations of opposing elements create amorphous and destructive beings of chaos known as weirds. They are often short-lived but highly unpredictable. Is it chemistry discovered the mana-infused alloy called Mizium and used its potent malleable properties to fuel energy depots or charge public works? Its shape-changing ability reflected in the flavor text of Mizium Transreliquat. What is it? Um, what do you want it to be? Various foundries and generators are interwoven throughout Ravnica, overseen by static casters and inspectors. The blister coils generate copious amounts of electrically charged mana to fuel Izzet designs while the humid steam engine of the boiler works releases stored energy to power city blocks and league tests. The smelting grounds of the Mizium foundry produce desirable alloy. Sparks fly and welding torches alight to construct anything from Mizium coils to weapons like the Mizium tank. The unbridled creativity of the Izzet League draws in many curious minds and several races seek guild membership in pursuit of knowledge. 
focused and astute Vidalkin number among the Izzet's more conservative mages who deliberate on theory and draft countless research proposals like the Beam Splitter Mage. Reckless goblins, on the other hand, choose to test first and ask questions later. Their labs bubble with violent concoctions and many labor in cramped boiler pits, scurrying about pipes or exhaust ports. Cyclopes function as the guild's heavy hitters. To protect themselves from injury in dangerous labs or working hazardous materials, many Cyclops are augmented with Mizium armor as seen in the Piston Fist Cyclops. Dragons and Viashino are respected by the guild due to shared physical traits with niv -Mizzet. but to avoid the parents' megalomania, often keep their heads down and their distance great. As mentioned, Elementals and Weirds are born of Izzet experimentation and possess a crude self-awareness that guides their fickle, destructive actions. We hear of their instability in the flavor text of Steamcore Weird. Like many Izzet creations, Weirds are based on wild contradictions, yet somehow manage to work. Most all guild members are adept in magic. They launch devastating salvos of mystical energy upon any who threaten their research. Though League scientists secret themselves away in sealed labs to avoid guild politics, niv mizzets personal judgments guided overall Izzet sentiment towards the other nine before he stepped down as guild master. The Firemind was especially cautious of demure infiltration and surveillance, and wished to keep his secrets thus. He viewed Selesnia as dogmatic and naive for their abhorrence of Izzet progress. The League's greatest scientific competition arose from the Simic Combine, but their creations are seen as soulless, uninspired failures. The Izzet League is a band of geniuses flirting with madness, still under the vain auspices of niv mizzets legacy, apparent in the flavor text of their signet. The Izzet signet is redesigned often, each time becoming closer to a vanity portrait of niv mizzet Spiraling walkways twist around cascading waterfalls, the mists of which plunge towards Ravnica's benthic oceans and obscure a bustle of scientific activity. Research labs contain aqueous incubation sacs and growth chambers of organic material spawned from surrounding substrate that nourish experiments in life and evolution. A panoply of nature, documented and controlled, opens up within algae-choked breeding pools and enormous submerged sinkholes. This is the domain of the Simic Combine, Ravnica's Blue and Green Aligned Guild. The Combine is a gathering of the plane's most inquisitive minds, terrestrial and aquatic, bound by an obsession not just to understand nature, but to dominate it. To strategically guide its evolution towards utopian perfection, they believe verdure and intellect are entwined, supportive rather than conflicting forces. Initially charged with preservation of Ravnica's wilds, as the metropolis grew to crush nature, Simic realized an active role in promulgating beneficial evolutionary qualities was required for its continued survival. Their forceful hand keeps urbanization at bay while fostering life adapted to a shifting world. The Simic ideal is perfectly described in the flavor text of Coiling Oracle. Snaking remnants of nature directed by a body of thought and progress. The oracles embody all that is Simic. Deep swells of blue mana from subterranean oceans guide the grand Simic vision. As the color of insight and intellect, blue inspires Simic growth chamber mages to push life's boundaries within the confines of bizarre labs. It drives evolution, supplies research and knowledge to the Combine who manipulate variables to alter utopian visions displayed in benthic biomancer and cytoplasm manipulator. From lush, hanging gardens and coral ecosystems, green mana courses through the guild. As the color of life, of growth in nature, green mana ideals are celebrated by the Combine. Their purpose is the defense of the organic through growth and green mana fuels simic biomages and grafters to create magnificent and monstrous beasts through genetic experimentation such as the Croconura or Adaptive Snapjaw. The flourishing of green and blue is manifest in the guild's mechanics, all of which include the incremental growth symbolized by 1-1 counters. Graft allows splicers and geneticists to shed layers of flesh from their creation and strengthen new amalgamations. Evolve, meanwhile, demonstrates simic resolve and skill in emerging from harrowing situations stronger. Adapt highlights the speed at which simic and their creations can mutate from changing environments, shifting to meet demands forced upon them. These two colors, blue and green, when balanced, create a nurturing substrate that fosters both body and mind, allowing each to flourish and adapt. 
When taken to extremes, they produce ideologues blinded by an endless pursuit of the unattainable. They create abominations recklessly and lead lives uninspired or horribly isolated. A unique dichotomy exists within the Simic Combine that permeates all guild levels and facets of life. Each idea, each object has its opposite, and the balancing interplay of conflicting forces steers guild affairs. It's first apparent in Simic leadership's political factions. Novigen, Heart of Progress, a semi-organic structure, functioned at its guild hall before its destruction in the original Ravnica block. The guild hall has been re-established as Zamek, and from here the Prime Speaker leads the Combine in their mission. The position of Prime Speaker is one elected, and two factions vie for the coveted office. The Utopians, whose most eloquent member is the Merfolk Zagana, believe adaptation between nature and civilization to be the key that unlocks harmonious utopia. A slow, but steady course. The adaptationists, however, led by the elf biomancer Venifar, have a more candid and pressing view stained by political intrigue between guilds. They hold that an active approach is necessary, that the Simic must adapt to a dangerous reality quickly rather than pursue delayed utopian ideas. Recently, Vanifar and her faction won prime speakership from Zagana. The larger Simic Combine is itself subdivided by two methods of classification. Geographical membership tied to Zonauts, and intellectual membership tied to clades of research. Zonauts are immense sinkholes that tore through like gaping mouths Ravnica's bedrock of rubble and ruin, and extended deep into the plains underlying ocean system. The sinkholes, now filled with water, plants, algae, and myriad unknown aquatic species, connect the surface world to uncharted depths and are populated by combine members. They're illustrated in cards such as Simic Guildgate and Urban Evolution. Nine such Zonauts dot Ravnica, each is a unique ecosystem, a trove of exploratory research for Simic scientists. Combine members conduct experiments in riparian labs affiliated with a particular Zonaut. Zonaut 7 contains the Guild Hall of Zamek and is located in Ravnica's 10th district, allowing Combine liaisons ease of access to the other guilds. The terraformers of Zonaut 5 have transformed rough sinkhole edges into a spiraling stair and stocked its waters with exotic species to attract Ravnican tourism, sparking interest in the guild. The largest Zonaut, Zonaut 4, housed a collaborative experiment between combined biomancers and Golgari rot shamans to produce bizarre species. Simic guild members are classified into particular clades based on research interest. The Gyreclade is interested in life and mana cyclical pattern as mentioned in the flavor text of Growth Spiral. Cyclical and spiral patterns are the speciality of the Gyreclade, which seeks to revitalize the cycles of nature. They seek to redirect or nullify growth and magic. Their wizards and sages promote the wild's initiative to reclaim large city streets for nature and often work in tandem with Selesnian and Golgari efforts. The whole clade busies itself with guild defense and protection. Its biomancers create durable exoskeletons or devastating organic weapons, while genetic engineers meticulously craft dangerous creatures with impenetrable carapaces and raking claws. The Finn clade study movements, the potential energy of systems, and its ecologists track migratory movements of winged beasts or benthic schools. The Simic philosophy and their connection to green and blue mana attract many of Ravnica's races to join their ranks. The calculating, utilitarian, and scrutinizing Vidalkin enjoy great success as biomancers and researchers among the Combine. Their blue-aligned principles and ability to absorb oxygen through skin allows Vidalkin ease of access to Simic Zonauts. The strong connection to life and growth possessed by elves grant them unique insight as tenders of chambers, genetic experimenters, and conservationists who ensure knowledge's reach doesn't extend too far into nature's rule. Humans who have undergone significant biomutation as artificial adaptation to an aquatic existence can be found at all levels of Simic society, sporting webbings, gills, and even wings which we see in cards like Biovisionary and Bioshift. The long-forgotten Ravnican merfolk have emerged from primordial waters to influence Combine efforts. Their advice is respected, and they are masters of the great subterranean oceans. More so than other guilds, the Simic make rather than recruit members. 
bizarre amalgamations, strange experiments, and artificial breeds seen throughout the guild are collectively known as Krasis, their nature heard in the flavor text of Drake Wing Krasis. Cautious not to repeat Vig's mistakes, the Simic fuse life essences using magic alone. Each result is called a Krasis. These hybridized, non-sapient lifeforms are born of magic and genetic design by Simic Biomancers to develop novel lifeforms which we see in Battering Krasis and Elusive Krasis. Some combine features of reptile and fish, other bird and drake, and others an unrecognizable melting pot of ooze, slime, and organic detritus. They are inexhaustibly variable, from a small newt to an enormous flying leviathan. Many guild members are themselves experiments, born from hybridization or twisted by artificial adaptations. The Simic isolate themselves from most other guilds and remain in benthic labs, but as mentioned, they admire Selesnia and Golgari reverence towards nature, and occasionally collaborate with reclamation projects, but they are wary of Golgari encroachment into their zonots. Azorius regulations outlaw much Simic research, and Senate raids on combine growth chambers has earned disdain. Simic view the destructive chaos of Rakdos as a danger to progress, an unpredictable powder keg of violence. Likewise, the Izzet pseudoscience produces only explosive disasters, unfit for true research. The Simic Combine's bioingenuity and meticulous scrutiny of nature with technology is apparent in the flavor text of their signet. For the Simic Combine, its sigil serves not as an emblem of honor, but as a trademark. Its familiar image on any biological commodity attests to superb craftsmanship, ingenious innovation, and higher cost. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on the enemy colored guilds of Ravnica. And that wraps up our exploration of the plane. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on the 10 guilds, which one is your favorite, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast or the blog, where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon, who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts, and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash the lorebarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.